Hey, Texas Fly Fishers. It is the last full weekend of September 2024. And I think there's no better way to kick it off than with the Athletic Brewing Company. Alcohol-free beer. There's no alcohol in this. God dang it, isn't that great? They're finally starting to pay attention. No alcohol. Good taste. This stuff actually tastes good, too. Look, guys. This is the Texas Fly Fishing Report for the last weekend in September 2024. This is the only channel you'll find on YouTube dedicated to regularly showing you and telling you about fly fishing news and hot spots and information about fly fishing in the great big state of Texas. It's the fall transition and it's fully underway at least on the texas gulf coast and here in north texas big calm waters i don't know what else to call the water here but big and calm because that's what it is and i never knew it had a name i just now i'm now i have to keep with it and give it a better name uh, for me it's confusing time in the local fly fishing because none of this uh, uh, you know, not a lot of trends, just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and nothing really to establish a pattern is what I can say about right here in North Central Texas. Um, you know that uh, we need to take a look, though, at the rest of the state because just North Texas is very um, difficult, probably the most difficult place to fly fish in the great big state of Texas. So let's take a gander. Cooler temperatures seem to have revved up the fish and ramped up the TPWD reports a notch. So it seems like everything's been kicked up a notch from poor to fair, fair to good, and a couple of excellent ones. <clears throat> Whew, I need a drink now. <laughs> excellent. Lake Belton, go figure. Lake Levon, very figurable. Those two are reporting excellent right now. It's a little more interesting on saltwater. Um, the only place showing any kind of excellence is once again, the Bolivar Peninsula. So you've heard me in past reports talk about that. It has not changed for months now. The BP is what I call it. And it's a really cool place close to Houston. So you Houston guys can get there really easily. The BP. Now, the rest of the salt is kind of, uh, kind of interesting, kind of interesting. I think guys on the coast are so busy catching redfish, they're not stopping to talk about it. Uh, the reports are pretty average to below average for this time of year, and we are headed into the best time to close out the year, and that is October. October is a golden month. It's a color of redfish, color of Oktoberfest. It's, it, it's the month to end all months in a fly fishing season before the wind kicks in and everything else. So I know for a fact that the lower Laguna Madre is hot, hot, hot with fish. That seems to have come from that influx of water from that, that the early, early hurricane. So I know for sure that fly fishing in the lower Laguna Madre remains excellent. And it has gotten a big boost by the hurricane that came through in June, July, barrel. So barrel raised the water levels, but it didn't go crazy. Pushed a lot of offshore fish inshore and onshore. That, you know, there have been unusual numbers caught of redfish and speckled trout in the surf further north of, uh, you know, the lower Laguna Madre, Corpus Christi, and on up from there. And at the jetties all over the Texas Gulf Coast, fish are abundant. So... Whether they report it or not, I'm telling you, there's fish. And the Lord Laguna Madre is no exception. It has fish too. And, you know, they haven't had just a tremendous amount of rain, but they had enough, they probably had enough rain to give them a little bit of freshwater influx into the hypersaline Lord Laguna Madre. But the thing is, is they're not talking about it. So you got to believe me when I tell you. Now, other than that, you know, and that October goes into November, December, I was down there. You remember when I was living down there and the wind kicks in and it isn't good for much of anything else except for kiteboarders. And they come from all over the world to, uh, to kiteboard on South Padre Island. So there is that. Guys, you remember that we had a domino game going 
and I had different numbers on the dominoes. I don't know where my dominoes went. Uh, let me go find my dominoes and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got my dominoes. <laughs> Shiner dominoes, of course. All right, and here they are. We're going to turn them all down. The double four is the one that I went and fished, which was Louisville Lake, Lake Dallas, whatever you want to call it. And that video is coming right after I finish this report. Um, the double zero is it's called double blank, actually, in domino terms. That's Ray Roberts. The double one, or Snake Eyes, Possum Kingdom. The double deuce is Grapevine. And just hold on a second. Let me see if I can figure out what the rest of them were. Hold on. Hold on one more time. Just hold on. Double three is Eagle Mountain Lake. The double five, we played the double four, okay? The double five, Texoma, and the double six is Whitney. Whitney. And we didn't put PK on there because we know we're going there anyway. Okay, here we go. Next lake on the agenda before we go to the awful, awful, awful double four. What do we have? The five, the double five, Texoma. So the next report comes from Texoma, Texas, right there on the Texas-Oklahoma border. Just a little bit early for those small mouths because that temperature hasn't triggered yet. But hey, Texoma is a fun place to go. So we're going to hit Texoma and see what we can do. Maybe chase some stripers if we see them. Or maybe we'll just have to drop on them. We'll see. Okay, moving forward quickly. I finally found some time to do my second outing to the double four, Louisville Lake, Lake Dallas, as I said. First was a complete blank, so I drew a blank. So the second one, I'm gonna tell you, you know, you can turn it off right now and go somewhere else. It's a double blank. There's a, a once again, I didn't catch any fish. But this is a fairly interesting version of being on Louisville Lake and kind of trying to cover this lake should be divided into thirds. Central east and west and what i saw you'll i'll talk about here in this video i think it's worth watching just just so i can kind of let give you the lay of the water and, and how things actually did not pan out on lewisville lake um, and of course you know to me my big my big excuse everybody's got an excuse right it's fishing right is that these lakes ray roberts and lewisville have been understocked for years i have two long weeks of articles on tpwd stocking of these two lakes and how poorly it's been done um, how both lakes have been ignored basically for a long time and uh, how uh, how tpwd thinks about stocking lakes in this region and throughout the state of texas that's at www.texasflycaster.com folks you're not doing yourself any good if you don't go to the website and read some of the articles there. It's 17 years worth of articles on there. And they are very in-depth and much more um, extensive and thorough than what you get in a video on YouTube. I love doing the YouTube videos. I love it for you to like and subscribe and watch these all the way through. This, this is going to put you to the test. This next one on Louisville Lake, Lake Dallas. All right, guys, we're out here on the double four today. It's uh, I would never launch here in my life. The water smells rancid. The ramp is beat down. This is awful. If you don't know what the double four is, that is Lake Louisville, Lake Dallas. And uh, the wind's picking up, so it's going to be a real awkward uh, takeout when we come back. I want to hit places that uh, I can hit before the wind picks up, and then we'll go for shelter after that. The double fours. Lake Louisville, nasty. Don't ever keep fish out of here, ever, ever. This place is nasty. So, all right, guys, we're out here on the double four today, and the wind is blowing like a banshee. I'm going to have to hold Mike to be able to talk to you guys, keep it out of the wind. It is so bad. And I'm even on the... I'm on the the leeward side right now of the old dam here on the double four domino that is Louisville Lake Dallas whatever you want to call it um, you know if I don't catch anything I'm gonna to have to prospect with a spinning rod because if I don't catch anything today it's not my fault 
you need to read the articles in my website, texasflycaster.com, and you can read about how TPWD has basically ignored these lakes near DFW when it comes to stocking fish in a proper, what I consider a proper way, and that's more bass, more largemouth bass. They have abandoned that pretty much, and they're just stocking with hybrids now. And uh, that is rare and more rare because you have to read the article to find out. Anyway, we're going to prospect a little with ultralight spinning, and then uh, if we get anything going, we will switch over. I'm missing those silver spoon flies. I've got to go home and make some of those up. I think they'll work. Um, you know, it's early fall. We take it as it comes, transitional. All the excuses in the world, but we'll just have to uh, throw away those excuses and get back to the double four domino. All right, guys, based on what I'm not seeing here on Louisville Lake, this is my second time to give this a try for you guys. Now, don't forget that. The first time, I never even got to pull out the camera. It was so bad. There was nothing biting or anything. But I did see a cove right over there. You know where I'm pointing to. Right over there that um, had a bunch of gar gulping over there so the objective today is to catch fish stay out of the wind um both in the same <laughs> those are tied for first place so that's what we're trying to do once we finish this run along the old dam for no good reason apparently um we're gonna go get in that cove where there's fish what can i say i'm i'm slow to learn louisville lake the double four domino game come on guys Straight up, these are places I've been before, caught fish here before, and this time of year before, and it's not happening right now. So this will be my second strike on this lake. I only get two strikes and I gotta move on. There's two, not just not enough time left in life to hang around on a city lake like this and catch nothing. So um, one last shot based on what I learned last time, one big whiff of a strike. I'm gonna go over to this cove over here on the east side, far east side, and I'm gonna go in there and get a look, see if there's anything worth looking at. Throw conventional, try to prospect. Guys, what can I say? It's really, really hard. All right, guys, I'm gonna take the filter off. I wanna show you a herd of buffalo here in North Texas, wild buffalo. Talk about some frustrating fish. Whew. All right, guys. I went ahead and went for the distance and went over to the far west side of this lake. And I saw some herds of buffalo. Um, but uh, yeah, buffalo are very, very hard to catch. So if you're coming to Louisville Lake, which is domino number, domino number double four, if you're coming out here, guys, you got to get here early and leave early because the traffic is so bad. I'm going under I-35 right now. You can hear the traffic. It's only 1.30. So, you know, around, uh, around 3 o'clock, the window closes here, and it's awful. So there's that. And I've got a long run to get back to that sorry-ass ramp that I put in at. Uh, I'm gonna put in over here the next time I come out, but we're done with Louisville Lake. I've had all I want, beat my ass twice. So I'm sorry for the profanity, folks, but I'm tired of getting my hiney handed to me. All right, under I-35, and away we go back home again. Soon, soon, it's a long 30 minute ride, but uh, Definitely the west side, the west side of I-35. Much better looking, uh, much calmer. Not like an open ocean. Um, the, hardly any wave action, very sheltered. That's what you want, folks, right now. The wind is brutal out of the north. So anyway, back to the studio. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, I'm, if you made it through, you're, you're a hero in my world. 
Here's your tip of the week. Carry more than one rod and reel to match, or, one, or two reels to match one rod, either way you want to do it. Put a sinking, full sinker line on one, generally a one rod does not match a sinking line, so that's why I carry one rod with regular sink tip or floating line and one rod with sinking, because you need, I need for my cast a slower rod for casting sinking line, that's just me. But you can always just carry a reel and, and work your way through it. That's so, at this time of the year, this is a fall tip, you can work other, areas of the water, other levels, other water levels um, more successfully because topwater bite will be turning off completely and pretty much completely. I know some of you guys will catch them on topwater and tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. I love being wrong, by the way. Be sure you tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, that's what you do. You carry two lines, switch it out if you need to try deeper. You're not having any luck at the mid depth or the, you know, the low subsurface and go deeper. Um, going to winter, a lot of sinking line action. That's how it works for me. Try it for yourself and see if that helps you. Sinking lines are, uh, are not easy to cast and it's, it, they're very challenging. So that, I appreciate you watching this entire video. You know that big midsection of Louisville Lake. I hope you enjoyed that. You get to see some of the water there and uh, I'm trying real hard to integrate a actual fly fishing location like the next lake I'm going to and uh, integrate that with these reports and it's a lot of work but thanks for liking thanks for subscribing please comment if you got any questions let me know I'm starting to take a few questions in now and it's helping quite a bit and I'll start re running off those questions here pretty soon um, so that uh, I can answer them if I know how maybe you can help me answer those questions um, Thanks for watching, guys. If you know a day that you would like this report to come out, that other than random days like it's been coming out for a while, it seems to be pretty successful on Thursday. If that's a good day for you, let me know. If, if there's 4,000 people giving me 4,000 different answers, well, then we're just going to put them out when we can because this part is easy. The other part of going and doing takes time, effort, and editing. A lot of editing <laughs> and recording. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Be sure you like and subscribe. TexasFlyCatcher.com. See you next time. Come here, man. Come here. I want to show you something. Drop the rocks. Drop the rocks. Drop the rocks. Come here. All right, give me the rocks. Give me the rocks. Come here. Give me the rocks. Oh, come here. Come here. I want to show you something. Ah. I may not be any good as a fly fisherman, but you're looking at the greatest fly fisherman ever to walk on the planet right here. This is him. See? Down. Down? You want down? I want down too. I've been down. <laughs> That's him. Get ready, people. He's going to rock the world. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you, man. Be sure and check out. This is, this is like the, the bloopers at the end. Forgot to tell you. Don't forget the Kydex. Sheaths for your plier, good pliers right there. Good stuff. Bang. Clicks in. Don't forget that I also, these are things I make and I sell. Don't forget the clear rod sleeves that I make. Come off real easy. Look at that. And I also sell artwork in my uh, website, texasflycaster.com and Pop Supply Shop. And that includes artwork by Aurora Cabrera. This is Aurora's work right here. Nice, huh? Aurora, she's uh, from Central America, and, oh no, actually she's from Mexico, Oaxaca, but um, definitely great ethnic uh, taste uh, of Oaxacan art, and I have some of her art, this one's not for sale, this is in my collection, uh, I, I never let that one go, um, in my, also artwork in my Pop Supply Shop, check it out.